In 2004, over Baghdad, an army spy drone collided with a special forces helicopter on its way to a top secret mission. The helicopter was undamaged and no one was hurt, but the crash got people worrying about Iraq's overcrowded skies. The major culprit? The Raven, a four foot long model airplane. The little bot is the most numerous and one of the most useful unmanned aerial vehicles in Iraq. Kenneth McLeod has seen Iraq in a way that few soldiers do, from the sky. See a lot of the action without actually being on the ground. For the last year, he has had a bird's eye view of the northern city of Mosul through a camera lens of an unmanned aerial vehicle. We fly over top high enough that we can't be seen. Want to know what's happening down the road or in the next town? Want to catch insurgents in the act of planning a bomb? Send a raven. That 2004 collision was a freak event. But today, with dozens of UAV species from all branches of the military, accidents are more likely. In the beginning, robots were big and expensive and only trained pilots flew them. Today, the technology has trickled down so much that groups of young soldiers can get their own smaller and cheaper flying robots. The US Armed Forces are divided into five branches, each with their own robot fleet. In early 2007, talk was going around the Pentagon that the Air Force would take charge of the overlapping zoo of UAVs. The Air Force is currently working towards becoming the executive agent for medium to high altitude unmanned aerial vehicles. The Air Force doesn't want to lose one of its $50 million F-16 fighters in a crash with some $30,000 robot flown by a 21-year-old GI. That's why we think that someone needs to be the lead agency for this. But the Army, not wanting to give up its drones, didn't like this idea one bit. The Pentagon ultimately ruled that the Army could keep control of its own flock of UAVs, regardless of the complications. The decision, while popular with the troops, didn't solve the underlying problem. The technology is moving faster than the policy. And every day, more robots arrive in Iraq, whether or not there's room for them. <laughs>